everyone who's attended. Uh, welcome to the healthcare panel. We have some great alums who will be able to speak about the field from diverse backgrounds and different tracks in medicine. So thank you to Natalie, David, and Peter for joining. Um, I'm going to start by asking you each to speak about your journey from St. Mike's, from what you studied at St. Mike's to whether you knew where you were going in your healthcare career to how you got there and what you see for the future. Um, so I guess I'll start with Natalie and then uh, Peter and David, whoever wants to go next can do that. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Niall and welcome everybody. Um, my name is Natalie Ledoux. I graduated with Peter in 2016. Um, I majored in biology and I ended up having a minor in both chemistry and psychology. Um, I knew going into school, I mean, I did the bio major. I knew I was going to go into medicine, but not sure what that was going to mean for me. Um, and kind of as I got later into my career, um, still was a little hesitant about going into the med school, so decided to take some time. Um, and I actually stayed in Vermont, and then um, I worked at UVM Medical Center as a CNA um, to kind of get some clinical hours, get some experience, learn more about the nursing role, see where I kind of fit in there. Um, hardest job of my life. I was there for about 18 months. Um, and it was awesome. It definitely, um, I'm still using that experience today, which I can talk more about later. Um, but I kind of identified um, with the nursing model when I was there. Um, and then that's when I started applying for direct entry nurse practitioner pro programs, um, which are programs where you um, go directly from having an undergraduate degree into um, an accelerated BSN program, um, Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, and then I went on into the master's portion um, and came with an NP degree. So I did that down in Boston at Boston College, um, and I graduated in 2019. Um, so I then moved up back. To, I'm from Maine, and I just came back about a year ago and finished my first year as a family NP. I work in a community health center, um, which means we're federally qualified. So we get federal funding to serve um, underserved and um, underinsured and uninsured patients, um, as well as all patients are welcome. Um, where I work, I am one of four providers. So I have a, a supervising physician who in Maine, I will only be supervised for two years. And then we have independent practice here. Um, I have, so I work with Dr. Wistar and then I have, I work with a PA, two PAs actually, and myself, um, and we each have our own panel of patients. So I'm a primary care provider now in the, pretty much an independent, um, role. So a little bit about me. Thank you. Peter, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, as Natalie already mentioned, I graduated in 2016 from, um, St. Mike's. And um, similarly to Natalie, I, I entered St. Mike's knowing that I wanted to go into medicine. Um, I had a, a good idea that I did want to go to medical school. So um, kind of right off the bat, I aligned myself with the pre-health advisor, um, who at the time was uh, um, Professor Bazone, um, which then transitioned to Professor Weaver. And I believe it's now Dr. Constantino or Professor Constantino. Um, and so uh, at St. Mike's, I studied biology. I minored in chemistry. Um, outside of class, I, I guess my, my main extracurricular, or the time I spent out of, outside of class, I was involved in the MOVE program and one of the mentoring programs. Um, and uh, in terms of additional stuff I did at St. Mike's, in addition to uh, just the, the core educational curriculum, um, I was involved in two summer research programs, um, one that was semi-affiliated with a, or which was affiliated with a um, St. Mike's professor and, and one that was an external um, endeavor, uh, which I think we can get into the details of those a little bit later. But um, yeah, so I, I did two uh, uh, different research experiences during two different summers. Um, upon graduating, uh, I was planning on taking gap years. Uh, I was planning on taking my MCAT during my gap years. So 
Um, when I graduated in 2016, I moved to New York City, uh, where I took a job in clinical research. Um, I worked in clinical research for three years, took my MCAT, um, applied to medical school, and uh, I'm currently in my, my second year of medical school um, right now. And um, one thing, and I'm sure we'll, we'll touch upon this, all of us will, but I just want to like make it clear to, to everyone that like the education that you get at St. Mike's is, is so instrumental in um, whatever you decide to do later on, uh, what, whatever kind of graduate program or, or lab job that you go into, whether you go into biotech, um, the, the education is just top notch and the professors are incredible and just take advantage of all the educational opportunities and um, the collaboration and the small classrooms. Um, it's just really in, an incredible school. And I, I, I thank them for, for everything and attribute much of my, um, uh, what I've done so far to, to the great education I got there. So I'll, I'll, I'll stay short in this little intro because I know um, these sessions are, are really good for questions. So I'll pass the mic over to David. Cool, thanks so much, Peter. Hi everyone, my name is David. I graduated in 2015, so I'm the elder of the panel, I guess. Um, while I was at St. Mike's, I was really involved with rest. Um, ran almost 10,000 hours there when I was a student. So I knew I wanted to do something with medicine, but I didn't quite know what. Um, after I graduated from St. Mike's, I worked in the UVM Medical Center's emergency department as one of their emergency medical technicians and continued to work on a few different rescue squads in the area. And while I was in the ER, I realized um, that I think that I wanted to kind of go down the nursing path. So I flew south to Florida. I did a 12 month bachelor's of science in nursing program and then flew right back to Burlington uh, right after that. And now I'm one of the emergency department nurses and I went through what we call a nursing residency program. So for about a year after I graduated nursing school, I worked on all the different specialty floors in the hospital. So electrophysiology, cardiothoracic surgery, um, the different ICUs that we have, pediatrics, which is my favorite, um, and kind of rounded me out. And now I'm a full-time ER nurse. And I loved it and I still love St. Mike's. And as to echo what Peter said, St. Mike's really does set you up fully for success in whatever you want to do, whether it be research, whether it be clinical medicine, um, tech med, like whatever you want to do. St. Mike's is an awesome, awesome place to build. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So I heard you all sit, speak about your extracurriculars and how you leverage those to help you get to where you want to be, whether it be research, whether it be rescue. Can you speak a little bit to the types of research and how they informed your overall decision making and helped you to get your foot in where you are now? And you can go in whatever order you'd like. Um, I can start since we can go in a circle. <laughs> um, so I did actually a couple different research um, programs, which now I'm trying to remember back. So after my sophomore year, I ended up doing EPSCOR, um, which is totally environmental health, um, or not even health, environmental science. <laughs> um, and then my second summer, I worked with um, Dr. Constantino and two of our classmates, um, looking at enamel density um, and carnivores. And then in my abroad trip, I, I finally focused into public health and medicine where um, I researched um, maternal and child health in rural and underdeveloped countries. So I just, the point of that is it doesn't really matter what you do. I mean, I was literally looking at like soil, <laughs> um, from storms and, um, but it still sets you up to, you know, know the scientific process, know how to ask questions, um, get that critical thinking cap on, write papers, learn how to be like, in, you know, learn how to investigate um, and read academic literature. And I think, yeah, no matter what you do, if you can learn those skills that will just set you up. Um, going forward. 
Um, yeah, I guess we'll, I guess we'll keep the same order. Um, so uh, I, my first research position, um, I was very fortunate to, to get to work with um, one of uh, Professor Lubkowitz's collaborators at an uh, outside institution for a summer. Um, so I was able to travel um, to Missouri for um, roughly 10 weeks um, and work um, on a molecular genetics uh, project within um, corn genetics. Um, I loved the experience. Um, I was primarily in the laboratory setting. Um, it taught me so much about laboratory techniques, the science, uh, scientific process, uh, reviewing literature, um, uh, creating an academic poster and presenting at academic uh, conferences. And it was really instrumental in kind of uh, opening my eyes to the, the uh, academic science world and in research. And I, I really enjoyed that experience. Um, and I was highly considering continuing to try to do that research, um, but I, I was able to find another opportunity um, to work in, in clinical research the following sum, summer in New York, um, which I ended up doing that um, because I, I knew I wanted to go into healthcare. I enjoyed research, so I, I wanted to um, see what clinical research was all about. And so um, when I was in New York, it was the summer between my junior and senior year, um, I had the opportunity to uh, work with um, uh, a physician there in the clinical research department. And uh, I just loved um, working on uh, uh, clinical research and the, the whole aspect of having a, a clinic with patients, seeing patients. And um, I really kind of fell in love with the idea of, of academic medicine there. Um, and so those two experiences ulti ultimately culminated in um, taking a, a job in clinical research, actually with the same uh, physician I worked with between my junior and senior year um, after college and, and worked at that institution for, for three years um, leading up to matriculating uh, in medical school. Very cool. And I did a summer of research with Dr. Chant um, on a small part of her larger um, prostate cancer research. We did that. Um, I loved, as a biochem major, absolutely loved uh, the nitty gritty of all the different um, cell layers and everything like that. So I had a blast with research, but I realized that I probably couldn't um, do it forever. I don't think that kind of lab research was for me. Um, but it gave me opportunities to go out. I went out to Colorado to present um, our literature. We published a few papers out of that summer. Um, and then I also did a clinical research study at the University of Vermont Medical Center. Um, oops, sorry, that's the cat's uh, tail there. Sorry about that. Um, wants to make an appearance. And I did some clinical research um, combining emergency um, medicine with uh, kind of the emergency services. So it was a bridge between what we do on the ambulance and what we do in the emergency room. And with that, it really taught me how to like really get involved in like the research community and start networking through those. Uh, and kind of, you gain a lot of respect when they, people can cite your papers and everything like that. So that was pretty, that was pretty cool. So at this time, I would invite all the attendees, if they have a question, to put it into the chat. And Kevin, who is here, will be monitoring it. I'll ask one final question to give people time to do that. And so this is a question that we got um, when someone registered. And the question is, what is something you didn't expect when entering the medical field and something you th that you, should, you thought you should know beforehand? So what is something you didn't expect? And yeah. I butchered that a little bit, but go ahead. I think that people have to get ready in the medical field for not having a normal schedule. Uh, your friends that work five days a week, Monday through Friday from like 8.30 to 4.30, that's great. And that's just not gonna be your life. Uh, if you're in the medical field, it includes nights, weekends, holidays. Um, and so just kind of getting ready to be in that mindset that things are gonna be a little bit different than just your general nine to five. I think that's something really important to kind of notice pretty quickly when you're getting into medicine. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll echo that. Um, 
my first position out of undergrad, I was working nights. Um, and I really don't remember that, that period of my life. But I would do it again if it was a really good, you know, good opportunity because we can do it. Um, and then I'd also say, you know, it's really exciting and a really rewarding job, but it's also, um, and I'm probably jaded because I just finished my first year, but I'm exhausted a lot. Um, I do have homework. I do bring home notes. I do um, have to do a lot of work outside of work. Um, and that will get better over time, I'm sure. Um, and it also can be really scary. I mean, these, you know, you have a lot of responsibility. Um, and St. Mike's, you know, says to be ready for that, I would say, but it is um, a little terrifying, I would say. That's something I, you know, you don't always think of. So I can't really speak uh, considering I, I haven't really entered my my years of, of working yet. Um, and uh, so so as a student, um, uh, you guys know how to be students. So <laughs> you're, you're in you're in school now. So or, or graduated. Um, but I guess my job in between um, St. Mike's and starting uh, medical school, I had a, a relatively normal schedule um, in clinical research, uh, pretty prescribed hours. Um, uh, I did enjoy my time um, in New York um, and uh, it was a great job, great experience. I, I learned so much uh, and um, it's just such a rewarding thing. Um, I think going into this field and um, the opportunity to, to be there for somebody um, who could be having a, a really bad day or could be having a really good day. And it, it's, it's just such a great field to get into. Um, but again, I, I, I can't really speak to the, the daily um, uh, interactions or feelings that I have from working a job like, like David and Natalie did. So I think their answers are, are probably much better than mine to that. Well, well Pete, from the um, going into more of back into med school, is there something that you didn't know going into med school that you wish you had known or some aspect of that? Yeah, so that's a that's a good question. And um, one that I often think about is I, I feel so fortunate to have had the education that I did at St. Mike's. And, and I, I can't stress enough that um, uh, spending the time working on, on your coursework and and reaching out to your professors and they are just so accessible. And I, I can't stress enough how amazing leaders are at St. Mike's and, and the ability to have like almost endless access to um, uh, incredible editors and brilliant professors has made um, laying down the foundational knowledge uh, in order to, to go back to school, whether that's um, in an accelerated nursing program or um, a medical school program or a graduate biomedical sciences program. I, I can't stress enough that St. Mike's is, is just incredible in terms of, and, and was instrumental in preparing me. And I, I've, I feel so prepared just over the past year and a half going through school that, that I, I feel very fortunate to have had an education at St. Mike's. Great, awesome, great answer. Thanks, Pete. Um, so, a couple of questions here um, on gap years, um, whether that be for med school or grad school. Um, you know, what are your guys' takes on them? Um, would you recommend them? Would you not recommend them? Um, you know, if you are going to take some gap years, um, what skills or like what what would help advance someone um, or get someone closer to becoming an either a doctor or going to grad school, um, kind of in the in the medical field? I think that exploring any field of medicine or science during your gap years is really important um, to find out, figure out what you want to do, um, or sometimes more importantly, what you want. Um, say you go into research as soon as you graduate and you enjoy it, but you're like, I don't really do this for research or advice. Um, so put it out there and just use, and don't look at your gap as that only doing to build a resume you also make sure that you're enjoying yourself like good time as well during your gap years so don't think of it just as a resume builder but go out there and enjoy it. 
Um, and I think um, all of us actually, yeah, at this time. Um, if you can get, um, if you're if you're going to go to medical school or PA and P school, um, doing like that assistant or um, room tech or DNA tech job um, is really great for your resume. But I think just as a person, um, I'm a really hard as I'll probably have. Um, you get very personal with your patients. And um, now I have a medicine that I work closely with, um, nurses that I work closely with, and think they have better appreciation for me and I for them because we've kind of been in the same role and it's not a hierarchy um, because I've been there and um, yeah, I, you know, it's more of a team uh, because I have that appreciation for those roles. Yeah, I uh, just a, a quick thing. I think there's might you do if you end up going back back to school. Um, I think the the professional growth that happens, no matter what job, whether that is within the hospital, whether it's in an office, I think there's a level of professional growth that I, that I probably wouldn't have developed had I'm in a professional setting or um, had to work job in mean um, undergrad and, and starting uh, medical school. So I, I think there's there's additional growth be like have these tangible skills or additional education that you'll bring into your graduate program if that's what you to do um, are also very important um, that are probably less often talked about. Yeah. So we are living in a global pandemic, so I want to ask a question of this, and there has been some questions about it. I guess the question I'll ask you guys is, how have you seen the field change, and are your respective positions responding to that? Peter, I'll ask in the realm of medical school, or is there something new that you guys are looking into? Is there a certain way that you're approaching 19? I'll open it up to each of you to res respond on the back of your role and how COVID is that the pandemic has kind of changed just about everything um, when it comes to emergency medicine. Uh, coming in, patients, were, like when it was all first happening, no one a definitive list of symptoms. We didn't really have a good test for it. Even the tests that we had were only 70% sensitive for it anyway. Um, so it kind of increased all of our suspicions about just everything. Uh, I'm sure in like five years, if someone coughs near me, I'll be like, oh my God. Um, but it's changed how we respond to, to patients and disease where the emphasis used to be very patient-based and do everything that you can for the patient. Also now, especially with PPE limitations, it's making sure we're protected first for just that person scenarios. So it's, it's been a, a little bit of a struggle kind of knowing who has symptoms where we're going to catch it um we're kind of just always looking over our shoulders Oops, sorry. um i work in uh, a rural area so um it's been a very interesting experience because i mean we have been hit by covid and i'm testing people um, and we still have quite the PPE shortage. I remember I was told to start washing your gloves, washing hands with gloves on to reuse them. Um, so it's changed just about everything. And so I had only been a provider for, for I think almost five months. Um, and being a new grad and going through this was really interesting. Um, but it also reminded us that um, I feel like healthcare, all of a sudden asking every single one of my, how are you doing? You know, really, like, how is your mental health? I think that's a really good initiative um, coming out of this is we're all focused on, you know, how are we doing really? Um, also um, navigating primary care and time of crisis. 
we did see a lot of patients put their own health care on the back burner. Um, and a lot, you know, we're living in a global pandemic, but, you know, a lot of things didn't go away. Um, diabetes didn't go away. Cancer didn't go away. Um, so that has been a very, we're on the flip side now where we know how to manage telehealth. Um, you had asked about how things have changed and how things might be changing for the field. I don't think telehealth is going away in our primary care setting. It was something we didn't have prior to. Can't say I love it, but patients do because, you know, I have a lot of patients who can't access um, the health center without, you know, planning a ride a couple weeks in advance. So um, that has its positives and uh, it is something that I think is coming. It was already coming, but it, it's here. <laughs> Medicine. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have anything in particular to add. Um, uh, currently, in my, my clinical years of, of uh, education, much of it is um, uh, lecture based and um, probably made many accommodations that um, uh, all the attendants are currently in school. So. Um, I think I'll leave it up to the actual providers, Natalie and David, who spoke um, great. Thank you, guys. I definitely have to echo your comments on telehealth and PPE and taking care as healthcare workers. Um, working in a hospital myself, I see it day that the healthcare workers really need to start with themselves and make sure they can care them and then go to their patients and telehealth. As you said, Natalie, it's definitely not going away soon. From a health perspective, we invest in it every day and we see it as being a huge part of connecting with people beyond go to the hospital every day. And also about really primary care is become so much more important because we're trying to manage uh, things like diabetes, disease, and forth in a proactive way so that people aren't going to be more acceptable to diseases like COVID-19. I'm going to go over to Kevin. He has a question that he can. Um, yep, this one kind of throws back to um, kind of through those gap years um, in job market, right? So um, how did you guys, you know, navigate the, the job market? You know, grad, um, how did you kind of get your first step into a career, you know, before going to grad school and med school? I was uh, lucky enough to my future employers through my extracurriculars at St. Mike. So through rescue, I was able to meet with um, two different uh, servers with different rescue squads, as well as um, boss now in the ER. Um, and I know someone at, like when everyone is asking you for prior years of experience, um, I think that as long as you kind of comport yourself very well in an interview, um, you kind of do one thing that stands out. I'm a big bow tie fan. So just have those people remember, oh, that was the bow tie guy. Um, like, looks, sounds silly, but something just as simple as that. Um, and just be as personal as possible. I think that that goes a really long way with uh, like the job mark. Um, sorry, Peter, do you want? I feel like we're going in the same order again. Um, and this is actually something I haven't mentioned yet, so I feel like it's a good time. Um, I actually participated in what's called um, Nurse Corps, um, which is part of, um, if you look, HRSA, HRSA, Health Resource Shortish Areas. Um, so I got actually funded through um, grad school and then um, my repayment is working in underserved area. Um, so that kind of tailored my job search, um, looking in specific areas that are always looking for providers. So I will say I had an easier time finding a job than my colleagues um, because I was looking in places that people are not. Um, and I want to tie that back to um, being active at school. And I, sure I got the scholarship because I um, had my move experience. Um, basically, I um, have been really passionate about service my whole life, and I don't want to talk like my, I'm doing a service to my patients because they're doing the service. Um, but I'm pretty sure um, that I would not have 
been as fortunate to have the nurse corps experience had I not had my move experience um, being part of the, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's our core programmers um, and being really close with it as well. Peter, can I direct a question to you? Sure. So we've had some questions about applying to med school, how many med schools you applied to. Can you talk us through that process? <laughs> yeah, it, and you know, it might be a question better to like uh, offline, but quickly, um, uh, if there are any uh, takeaways or quick little tidbits, I think um, studying the MCAT uh, while you aren't doing a full-time job um, is definitely a great thing if you, you're able to dedicate um, a specific period of time to study and take the MCAT. That's great. Um, in terms of schools, that um, can fluctuate depending on the situation you're applying with. Um, uh, again, I think uh, Professor Constantino would be a great resource uh, for specific questions regarding the choice of, of applying to school. And they really are like the go-tos and experts when it comes to um, what can make you a successful applicant. And obviously, um, additionally, like reaching out to individuals who have, who have recently gone through the process. Um, and I think uh, Emily just mentioned that we're all available um, to, to be reached to this. You know, we're, we're kind of running over time, but um, it's kind of a uh, case basis. I, there are people all over the map. There are people who attend schools and then there are people who apply to a very large number, uh, but it kind of it kind of depends on on your situation and, and where you want to end up. Um, except, um, again, yeah, I think reaching out to the pre health advisors is uh, probably one of the best options, and, and utilizing them for for support and uh, additional advisement is is really really important, and they're they're a great resource. Thank you. And thank you to everyone because you've offered so much great advice. You've shared us how St. Mike's has helped you to get to where you are today, how it's prepared you to be there and all the different ways you've leveraged all of your extracurricular activities and your research. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. As Emily and Peter have been, um, all the panelists will be available. You can come on SMC Connect, LinkedIn, um, and the Career Education Center can help you get in contact with them, as well as they know a plethora of other alum in healthcare who they can connect you with and help you really grow in the field and enter the field. Um, so thank you to all our panelists and, and this conversation. Thank you so um, much. Awesome. Thank you. I'd just like to, to echo all that again. Uh, um, thank you guys so much. Um, and also just a little throw, um, you know, that for our students, um, you know, always reach out to career education. Um, you know, the alumni board is here to help you. Um, you know, we put on the first party every year. So feel free to reach out to any and all alumni. Um, all of you. So um, again, thank you guys so much. And Bye guys.